You read the Bible, the book of Genesis. You'll read that God <laughs> created the world in six, and all that was in it in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. So, it was after that that he created Adam and Eve. So on that first Sunday, it was, the world was a very quiet place. You know, there was nobody out mowing the lawn or cleaning the car or things like that. But all the vices and virtues were running rife. And it wasn't long before the voice of boredom was heard. I'm fed up. Well, the rest of them, they all agreed that, you know, there was not much going on. So they decided to think of something to do. Well, creativity, he created a game to play. And this game, what he proposed was that one of them closed their eyes and all the others went off and hid. And then the one who closed their eyes had got to come and find them. And madness, <coughs> he said, I'll do that. I'll close my eyes. I'll come and find you. But justice said, hang on a minute, how can we rely on you to do it properly? You know, you're mad. You know, how you get... And man, it's, well, it's easy, isn't it? You know, one, two, three, miss a few, 99, 100. <laughs> well, they all agreed that wasn't going to work. So they laid down some proper rules. And they dis decided that he'd got to count from 1 to 100 and from 100 to 1 at the same time. So he started 1, 100, 2, 99, 3, 98. And all the others started to go off and find hiding places. Well, Daydream was the first one that saw the perfect hiding place. Because he looked up into the sky and saw those white, fluffy clouds. And up he went. Idleness, well, it didn't go far. He just went a few yards. He didn't really bother finding a proper hiding place. <laughs> just plonked himself down. Forgetfulness. Actually, I can't remember where it is. <laughs> <laughs> <But> anyway. <laughs> and then we got... Fear. Fear. He saw this dark cave and thought, that's where I'm going to hide, right down in the darkness of that cave. And off he went. Lost. Now, the Garden of Eden was like all good gardens. Right down in the bottom corner was a composting, all dark and steamy. <coughs> and lost them. that's just the place for me. And, well, Madness was still counting. 3, 98, 2, 99, 1, 100, coming, ready or not. Well, as soon as he opened his eyes, he saw idleness. And then he just looked up in the sky and he saw the clouds moving around forming different shapes, you know. And if you looked at it, you could see pictures. You know, first there was a fairy tale <coughs> castle. Then there was a, a shoal of dolphins swimming across the sky. And actually, if you look on a nice day, and the nice fluffy clouds there, I'm sure it's still up there, because you can still see all these images. Anyway, indecisiveness. I never told you about indecisiveness, did I, you know? Because he first he hid behind a tree. And then he thought he'd be better off behind a rock. Well, he just decided he would be better off behind the tree. And, of course, he got caught. Then, Madness saw the cave. And he thought, there's somebody in that cave. But he was a bit worried about going in. So he got himself a pitchfork. And he went right down into the dark depths of that cave. And he drove fear out of there. And then he heard a commotion coming from the bottom corner of the garden. He went down and the compost heap, he did a good prod with his pitchfork and out leapt lost. 
looking a bit shamefaced. <coughs> well, this is how it went on. All afternoon, one by one, he found the different ones. And by the end of the afternoon, there was only one left. And that was love. Yeah, they say you can be very elusive. But when you're looking for something, it's best to sit down and think about where you're likely to find it. You see, not just keep willy-nilly. I mean, if you're looking for the remote to the telly, you don't look in the fridge, do you? There's no, no law against it, you. You can if you want to. I mean, if you want to keep it there, it's okay. But anyway, see... What madness should have done was had a good think about it. In a garden, where are you going to find love? Well, it's got to be a flower. And to me, it's got to be a rose. Why? Because it's beautiful. It's delicate. It's fragrant. And, of course, the cynics amongst you will point out it's got a thorn. Anyway... Madness was having none of that. He was turning up rocks. He was here, there, and everywhere. And he was just about wore out. And he was standing with his back to a rose bush. And he just sensed there was somebody behind him. So he spun round quickly. Unfortunately, he was still holding his pitchfork. There was a yelp from the rose bush, and out came love with two red prickles. <coughs> going down her cheeks. Because he'd taken out both of her eyes with his pitch. But he hadn't meant to do it. He was very regretful. And he said, you know, I'm so sorry. Here, let me take your hand and lead you. And ever since that day, love has been blind and led by madness. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, with this rose thing, a lot of you blokes were down the florist this morning <laughs> buying flowers for your loved ones. Yeah. Well, I was down there first thing this morning. Oh, yeah. But I was a bit financially embarrassed to be quite to. But I come up with this good idea. I went and I took a picture of a beautiful floral display. And then I emailed it to Pamela with a little bit of homespun poetry. I mean, I mean, it's nothing like yours, Jill, but you know, it sort of went something like: roses are red, violets are blue. These flowers were expensive, but I did think of you. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, she sent, she sent one back. Uh, it said. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. If you think I'm cooking your tea, more fool you. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd better make it a job to her. So I booked a table for seven o'clock this evening. Well, I didn't know she didn't like snooker, did I?